Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at render style uh, in Crazy Talk Animator 2. So we have again our boy Saul on the screen here and he's going to help us demonstrate uh, what render style actually is. So let's get right into the render style panel. Uh, the tool over here uh, is on the left hand side. You can also use the R hotkey and let's bring that up. And you can see that if we have all these default render styles that come with Crazy Talk Animator 2, uh, all kinds of cool stuff like line art, uh, grayscale, uh, neon, this one's uh, pop art. So you can basically use these for different to set different moods and uh, have a different feel for your animations. And I'll show you how you can apply this to different things in your scene as well uh, in just a moment. You can see this. Uh, that one's pretty freaky. Uh, this silhouette one is uh, just like good for shadows if you want to have shadows in your scene and stuff like that. Uh, but let's go back to uh, the default uh, one right here. And I'm going to take a quick look at the outlines first. So you can see on the top here we have the option to show outline. So let's zoom in a little bit on Saul. And uh, if I deselect the show outline, you can see he looks a lot more cut out now and his outline is gone. And it's maybe more of a little bit of a softer look. Let's go ahead and reapply that. And that's just the option to toggle the outline. Uh, you can see on the right here we have a slider that allows us to change the uh, value of that outline to very thin or, uh, or very heavy. So you can see the different uh, types of uh, appearance that Saul will have if you uh, change that outline. Uh, let's maybe try and keep it about 25% on the thin side. That looks very nice and light. So that's the uh, that's the uh, lines. Uh, if, if you want to uh, go into more detail on the lines, let's go into the edit uh, menu here and we'll go to project settings. We have an option for fixed line width while scale. Now what this will do here is um, if I select this and I just, uh, you know, uh, press OK. This will basically keep my line width consistent no matter how scaled down or scaled up my character is. So let's take a look at what that'll do. Um, you can see if I go to uh, very heavy, um, let's take a look at if I scale Saul down, you can see the lines stay the same width and you can barely even see Saul's features uh, right there. We can zoom in right there and uh, the line width stays the same but uh, obviously Saul is getting smaller. So normally uh, in most cases, you probably wouldn't want to do that, um, but uh, that's just an option for you as well. If you have a thin, uh, maybe a very thin outline, and I scale that down, it'll be uh, a little bit less extreme. You can see you have like super midget saw there, and then that's back to pretty much normal, the normal side or the normal uh, line width. So let's just go ahead and uh, bring saw back up to his uh, normal height, something about here, and we'll work with that for now. And so I'm going to, just going to go ahead and uh, edit and project settings and we'll just turn that fixed line width off and press OK. And now we're all back to normal. So let's get into the advanced options in the render style panel. The advanced options can be found down here, advanced settings. And you can see that uh, we come up with two little areas, group name selection and color adjustment. Now this may seem a little bit intimidating at first, but it's actually quite simple. So let's take a look at, uh, so let's go a little bit closer in here. You can see there's all of these group names here, Skin01, uh, Upper01, Lower01. Uh, these are all just group names, and in these groups, there are a number of different parts. So you can see in the skin group, we have the skin on his head, the skin on his upper torso, lower torso, and the skin on his shoes. Um, let's take a look at what will happen if I have the uh, skin from the head selected, and I have this effect scene group selected. Now that's key um, to what I'm going to do here. Let's try and change the, uh, the hue of that. So you can see if I do that, that's changing all of the items in that group. So it's changing, you know, Saul into different uh, various alien colors like that. Maybe we'll bring it back to normal there. However, if I deselect effect scene group and I have the head selected and I try to change the uh, hue, you can see that it only affects the head now. So that's basically, um, you know, the difference between effect scene group and uh, when it's selected and deselected. And I can also like invert the color. Um, and bring that back to normal. If I have a fixing group, I can invert the color for all of them, and that'll change into a super, uh, super dark color there. So we'll just keep that off for now. And we also have the uh, option to affect all. So if I go to affect all, you can see that now affect same group becomes uh, disabled. And let's just zoom out a little bit so we can see his whole body. And let's say, for example, I want to change the hue. And now that's going to affect every single part of the body, every single group. And you can see I can get various cool... Uh, you know, different color patterns and stuff like that. Let's maybe try something like uh, this one right here. It's a very kind of uh, cool uh, look for Saul. 
Um, so this again would be like a, a you know a sad kind of melancholy uh, look for Saul if your if your scene was like this. And if I want to maybe change the uh, the color of his uh, pants, for example, let's go down and see where the pants would be in the group name. Uh, lower zero three uh, and lower zero one. We have both of those at lower torso. Let's select lower zero three first and try to change the hue. Oops, sorry. We have uh, effect all still still uh, enabled. So let's go back to about there. I think it was deselect effect all and deselect effect same group. And let's go ahead and select the lower torso here and see which item that is. You can see that's his pants right there. So if we wanted to maybe change his pants to you know a purple color, we can decrease the brightness or increase the brightness and uh, maybe decrease that saturation. And you can see now it's a very, very sad, melancholy looking uh, Saul. The color scheme is very, um, you know, blue. Uh, if I selected maybe, for example, the uh, lower zero one, and I tried to change the hue there, you can see that adjust the, uh, the the lower cuffs of his of his pants there. So that basically just goes to show you that the different part names affect different, uh, you know, areas on the body. And these are defined when the character is created in Flash or whatever other uh, vector tool you have to create your characters. And we'll have further tutorials on that as well. Now if I select Saul and I just maybe move him over a little bit, let's hold down the control key and let's uh, click and drag and bring in another Saul. So it's going to duplicate Saul. So now he has a bro right here. And for the other Saul, um, you can see I can, you know, obviously go to different template styles and apply those different template styles. Uh, like grayscale. But if I go back to default, it's not going to go back to the default Saul. It's going to go back to the values I have defined for this guy. So just keep that in mind if you're copying props or copying characters. You can, uh, that's one way to save your, uh, your render style. And maybe for this Saul, let's bring him in, let's make him a little bit, uh, happier. Let's give, make this Saul, oops, <laughs> we want to, uh, go back to, uh, affect all here again and, uh, maybe make this guy a bit brighter and, and happier. Uh, maybe the the yellow theme here would probably be be not really nice. Maybe this one here. This is a sunny day, very bright. Uh, increase the saturation there, and uh, you know make that very uh, uh, high contrast. And you can see it's almost night and day. This is a kind of happy sunny day Saul, and this is a blue melancholy day Saul right there. Now, if I want, I can also uh, if I have another character in my scene, go down to Content Manager, and let's go to uh, let's bring in Emma again here. And with Emma on the scene now, uh, I can copy this render style from Saul to Emma. So let's select Saul right here. And I'm going to go up to this button right here, Apply Selected Render Style. And let's go ahead and apply that to Emma. And then you can see Emma changes uh, her color scheme to match with Saul's. If I press Escape and I select this Saul over here, I can also copy that render style to Emma. And then she goes back to the, uh, the blue uh, Emma right there. Now, in addition to uh, transferring uh, color schemes from characters, you can also do it with props as well. So let's go ahead and bring in our scene. And uh, what I want to do is go to uh, scene, and let's go and bring in this uh, this conference room that we have. Um, and we'll just try and bring our characters a little bit down so they're not floating in the sky. Uh, I'm going to control and click and select all of them, and we'll bring them down to a more uh, human level right there in the conference room. So let's take a look at what happens if I select one of my characters. Let's select the uh, the hot looking Saul in the middle there. And let's try and uh, copy his render style to a prop. I'm going to go here and uh, apply selected render style. And let's try and apply it to this uh, this board in the back here. If I select it, you can see nothing really happens. Uh, the same with the chair, uh, any of the other stuff. I'll try and apply it to this table. Nothing happens. And let's take a look at why that is. Uh, let's go back into our render style panel here. And you can see when I have Saul selected, look at all the group names. We have Skin01, Skin02, all these different uh, hair, teeth, mouth, and all that stuff. Um, now let's take a look if I select the uh, board up here. The board, the group names are completely different. We have Custom02, 05, and 07, as well as an outline. So basically the uh, group names are not the same, so there's not going to be any um, render style information transferred over. Let's try and uh, let's select this uh, board right here, and let's try and customize the colors a little bit. So I'm going to select this custom 02. Let's try a different. Let's try this uh, chair over here. The chair has a few different uh, um, group names. So let's go try and custom one, and uh, maybe change that. Uh, oops, we have effect all selected there. I'm going to deselect that. Custom 01. Uh, you can see that. Uh, where is custom 01? Oh, maybe you want to. Oh, not sure where that is. Custom 05. There we go. We can change this to a really funky, uh, you know, purple and green style. 
custom 07. Where is that? That's the, the lower part right there. So if we wanted to change it to maybe like a uh, a green, a more green themed uh, conference room, we can do that as well. So let's go ahead and apply that uh, render style to the uh, the chair, the other chair right there. The board, you can see that uh, affects the board, the table. We get a more a more green theme. Even the projector, we can change uh, that other board right here. Let's uh, zoom, press escape and zoom out a little bit here. And you can see we can gradually, you know, eventually turn everything into a more uh, green themed uh, room. Now, what if I selected the entire, I can select uh, basically a number of different props. Let's go to our scene manager and select the entire scene. That's selecting basically all of the stuff in the scene. And then we go to render style and let's see what happens if I change the entire scene to line art. We can do that. Uh, we can do it that way as well. And you can select individual items and all kinds of stuff, um, you know, to get any kind of cool effect and all of the uh, different um, items in your scene will be changed to that color that you choose. You choose a neon one. Oh, that's pretty hard on the eyes. Let's go back to uh, something maybe like a grayscale one here. And you can see we have everything grayscale and the line art. Uh, you can see all kinds of cool stuff. Let's go back to uh, default for now and we'll keep it at uh, this one right here. And if I can also do this if I select multiple objects in my scene. Like let's just select these two chairs and this uh, table for example. And let's go ahead and adjust the uh, the hue. And we want to select a default right there. And with the two tables in the or the sorry the table and the two chairs selected, let's go ahead and try to uh, change the hue of of that. You can see nothing will work right there. Let's try and affect all. And if we change the uh, hue on this one, you can see we get all kinds of cool different combinations of color. And that's basically it uh, for fooling around with the uh, the different render style uh, settings. Now I mentioned earlier that when you're creating your uh, your props or your characters in Flash, you'll have to define um, each different part uh, as a as a symbol in Flash. Now the symbols are made up of uh, shapes and lines and all that stuff, and each uh, each uh, symbol in Flash will represent a part in Crazy Talk Animator. So let's go into our uh, vector grouping tool really quickly, and I'll show you. Uh, we'll just select this uh, table first, uh, or maybe this chair is a very simple example, and I'm going to go to our uh, prop composer up here on the left. And when that loads in, I have my uh, chair selected, and I'm going to go to this tool here, which is our vector grouping tool. So this may look a little bit intimidating at first, but actually it's not that bad. Uh, you can see that we only have one angle, uh, the zero degree profile angle. Don't worry about the index number here. Uh, the angle is at zero degrees. All of these part names uh, are different, and they're all parts of different groups. So again, the symbols that you save in Flash will correspond to these different part names. And we're going to have more tutorials on this in the future in the character customization, character creation tutorials. So I'm just going to try to briefly explain it here. Uh, let's take a look at when I select different items here uh, in my vector grouping tool window. Uh, custom 1, this prop right here. Let's try and find, uh, there you go. So uh, index 5 here, that's this part of my uh, prop right there. And uh, this part right here is, uh, they're all different groups. This custom 05 is, is the uh, seat of the chair, and this custom 05 is that area. So you can see they're grouped together. Uh, as you saw earlier when I modified the color, those two were grouped together in custom 5. Now what I can do is uh, if I have custom 5 selected, I can also you know, select the same color. And that'll select uh, both of those ones right there. And if I wanted to invert the selection, I can do that. And that will select everything else. You can see the stuff that's flashing is the stuff that's uh, selected right there. Um, so let's go ahead and invert that one more time. So we got these two selected. Now see, for example, I'll select a custom seven here and we have uh, select same color selected. So it's, you know, selecting both of those. What if I wanted to, uh, you know, change these to the custom five group? Let's go ahead and down here in our uh, group uh, select name selection, let's select custom zero five. Uh, so if I have custom zero five selected over here and then I select these two um, props, that are currently in group uh, custom 07, let's go ahead and try to apply that. And you can see now those will change to custom 05. And if we select these ones, now all of that group is selected together. And the prop will change as well. You can see now they are all the same color. So that's basically how you can define the uh, the group names in Crazy Talk Animator 2. Let's go back out to the, uh, the main uh, stage here and take a look at that uh, one chair. So now you can see this chair is all blue and this chair is uh, all red. And if I uh, go into here, I go into my render style again, let's go ahead and see what happens if I uh, maybe choose custom 05. And now you can see that entire seat 
will change uh, together and it won't have those uh, lower um, kind of shadow areas on the seat. So that's how you can basically uh, group, uh, define your groups in Crazy Talk Animator 2 once you've exported your, uh, your props and whatnot from Flash. And of course, a quick reminder, that only will be available with the pipeline version of Crazy Talk Animator, which allows you to import external files. Now you can import like Swift files and, and PNG files and everything like that, but you won't have the amount of detail uh, that you will with the pipeline version of Crazy Talk Animator 2. All right, so that's about it for uh, render style. Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit about that. And uh, again, like I mentioned, we will have further tutorials on uh, importing and uh, you know modifying different props and characters and everything like that. Uh, uh, character pipeline from Flash to Crazy Talk Animator 2. But for now, this is just a simple introduction to render style and how you create those groups and the parts and everything like that. All right, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for more great tutorials on our YouTube channel.